Hi, my name is Scott. I work and live here in China for about the past uh, 13 years. Uh, welcome to my hobby wood shop. Like most wood shops, uh, everybody builds themselves a, a router table. Uh, you take a hand router and bolt it upside down inside and then you have your own little you know nice setup router table like this one uh, where you manually run the wood through uh, and, and do your whatever cutting you're wanting to do. Uh, I was running my thickness planer uh, the other day and really like how you can just sit there and feed the, the, uh, uh, the wood through, the stock through. And, uh, you know, no, no dangerous to fingers. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So what I did is I designed and made a power feeder for my router table. And let me show you how I did it. This is how I've been doing it for years. Um, a real possibility of uh, becoming a finger getter. Pushing uh, the wood up against a motorized abrasive belt and also uh, holding the stock down, keeping it flat on the table. You can just keep feeding this setup all day long. Here I wanted to show uh, you guys up close how the rollers react both from the side and the top. The uh, rollers spring back to position um, awaiting the next board. Here I wanted to show the strength of the power feeder. Probably taking almost a five millimeter cut. I uh, adjust the downstream rollers after it's been through the cutter. You can see I had a little chip out there, probably running the belt too fast. I think on a, right now I'm probably about a 70% uh, speed. Here I put uh, my uh, T-slot cutter in. Um, it does a fantastic job. Uh, the wood I'm working with, and this is the same board from the previous scene, is about an 18 millimeter uh, red oak. Here I put in a, I can't remember, is it either a three or four millimeter uh, diameter uh, router bit. Slowed the belt way down so you can see um, how smooth it works even at a very low uh, speed on the belt. Uh, I'll have to say that uh, <laughs> probably some of the best grooves I've ever made. Um, no burn marks, um, no chattering, no chipping. Uh, really great. Now this is just an added bonus. Um, I set these rollers up on my table saw. Uh, prototype one, this little white roller holder or whatever, 
I, it didn't take long for me to break that. Uh, but continued on. Uh, prototype three or four. Um, getting close to what I want. I'm just not happy with this uh, the, the uh, black standard timing belt. Uh, this is what I ended up with. We've got 220 volt AC um, coming into the box. Uh, 220 AC is standard in, in China. Uh, it's hooked up to a, a transformer that's outputting 24 volt DC. And I run that through a speed controller and it goes into the 24 volt DC uh, motor and it's connected to a speed reduction gearbox. Um, it is all attached to a, a, a timing belt pulley. So I have forward, reverse, and speed control. This is the switch for the router inside the table. On my uh, 3D printer, I printed these um, three. They're identical. Um, don't have a name for them yet. Uh, maybe something like tension roller or what have you. But they are just got a lot of tension and springy action to uh, hold the wood uh, up against the belt. And it's a, a standard ball bearing with coated with uh, urethane. Um, this is the dust collector. I also 3D printed dust collector, chip collector. I just hook it up to the shop back. Um, the belt is a special made belt for us. Uh, we found a guy online that sells this timing belt material. And also this green stuff that is usually that is used on uh, conveyor belt systems. Um, very abrasive. Uh, he made it uh, to our size, uh, both width uh, and length. And he took the two materials and through a process to you know vulcanize them. And so uh, they're custom made for us. Uh, after those uh, previous videos, I, I played around with the power feeder a bit more and made some uh, changes and uh, improvements. I, at least I think so. Um, first, I went back to the original design I had of using a, uh, a, a, a piece of uh, hardwood here to hold, I guess we call them the tension rollers. Um, I 3D printed these, but they just don't seem to be as strong. Um, as you can see, I, I, you, you can move them a little bit. And when you do this, you you get some bending and distortion through here. So I went back to this, a lot stronger. Um, I just like it a lot better. And it also gave me an opportunity to uh, work on this a little bit more. Um, originally, like these, uh, these rollers are right here. Now, if I want to do a wider board, you know, I'd like to move this, um, these tension rollers out closer to the cutter. Um, so I extended, uh, got a couple pieces of hardwood, extended these out, and now I can move these rollers out towards the end of this ex extension and hold the board, or, you know, hold the board down closer to the cutter. I'll shove this through. It won't turn it on. The uh, motor or the router, but this will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So right now I'm out closer to the cutter. <clears throat> now this is 75 millimeter. So if you were to bring these roller, this roller, you know, be like out and towards the middle, you just take these screws out and screw them in here. And uh, for a more narrow board, take these screws out here and then go back into the, the original holes. So made it more versatile, 
Um, really like it. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please leave it down in the uh, comment section. Or if you want to contact me direct, uh, go to my company's website, www.gec-asia.com. Again, thanks for watching.